Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat more hypothetical slash theoretical paper in regards to what the scientists refer to as DAPs, dark exoplanets, or essentially exoplanets made out of dark matter. The still unconfirmed, still hypothetical concept that the scientists have been trying to physically discover for the past few decades, but that most scientists believe definitely exists because of a lot of different confirmations from a lot of different observations including one very recent one that we've discussed in the video that should be somewhere in the description. And so in other words, in this particular study, the scientists do something a little bit more hypothetical. They assume that dark matter is real and seems to be made by physical particles. And if it's real, and if it's made out of physical particles, it's natural to assume that once in a while, it might form objects very similar in mass to a typical exoplanet. Which also means that at least some of these exoplanets, in theory, could be orbiting typical stars. And so if these dark matter planets exist somewhere out there, the scientists behind this paper wanted to essentially figure out what exactly we would be seeing if we essentially looked at these planets using modern techniques. And considering all of the evidence the scientists have been detecting in regards to the existence of dark matter, it sort of does make a little bit of sense to potentially assume that maybe planetary objects made out of dark matter exist as well. Although obviously in this case, unlike planets like Earth made out of baryonic matter, or essentially matter made out of baryons, composed of particles able to interact with everything using all of the forces in the universe, including the strong force and the electromagnetic force, a hypothetical dark matter particle would only interact with everything using gravitational forces and thus create very unusual, very exotic planets. But the question of course is, what sort of planets, and what exactly would they look like if we were to look at them using modern telescopes? For example, can they actually be seen in visible light? Would they be somewhat opaque, blocking light from passing, or transparent completely? And would they have any other effects on the light that can be then detected by telescopes such as, for example, the James Webb, or the TESS telescope currently looking for various exoplanets? But in this case, it really depends on what kind of dark matter we're talking about. Because there are so many potential explanations, it can be one of two possible categories. On the one hand, dark matter could be made out of extremely small particles that don't even interact with anything else, even each other, moving around the universe, forming very large clouds, and gravitationally attracting everything around themselves, but not really forming any larger objects. But the alternative explanation invokes what's known as composite dark matter, sometimes known as macros, or so-called macroscopic dark matter. The study about this is in the description below. And in this case, these would be some very unusual, much larger chunks of stuff, possibly representing very large blobs, combining into larger and larger objects. Theoretically, some can be even mass of a planet or even larger. And if such objects exist, they would essentially represent very dark exoplanets with extremely unusual properties, very different from typical exoplanets observed by various telescopes. And although their size and even their mass might be very similar to a planet, the physical interaction with their environment would be extremely different. For example, such an object would very likely interact extremely different with the star and all of the matter in the star system as well. But the question is, of course, how do you tell them apart? Well, today most of the planets have been discovered using the transit method, by looking at the shadow of the planet passing in front of the star. And naturally, different planets will produce very different shadows. But in this case, depending on what the planet is made from, the passage is also going to be very different. And so if a certain object seems to have a certain mass, but creates a very different shadow from what's expected, that's going to be a telltale sign that this particular object is possibly made from something else. Or in order to discover exactly what the mass of the object is, we normally also require what's known as radial velocity, the observation of tiny wobbles of the star as the planet moves around it. So in this case, these types of objects can only be discovered if their mass and of course their size are known exactly. But if we see a planet that interacts with a star and its properties suggest that it's either extremely dense or extremely low in density, that potentially could be a signal that this planet might not be exactly what we think it is. For example, if we discover a planet whose density seems to be much higher than the density of iron. And intriguingly, in the last few years, at least a few of these unexplained exoplanets, such as K238b, have already been discovered to have a density that's a little bit too high. 
For this unusual exoplanet, the preliminary calculations suggested the density of up to three times higher than iron, although recalculations suggested a slightly lower density. Either way, it's still above what we have on Earth and above what we have anywhere in the solar system. So basically unexplained. There's actually an older video on the channel from one of the recent discoveries of another unusual exoplanet with a very high density. It should be somewhere in the description below. But in essence, it would be very difficult to explain the existence of these unusual exoplanets because they're just a little bit too dense. And though the dark matter observation could be maybe a little bit too extreme right now, it's still worth considering. But they also propose that the opposite is possible as well. Planets extremely low in density. Or essentially planets whose density is so low that they manage to reach very large sizes, even though once again they really shouldn't be that big. And even here we have a few examples that are still difficult to explain that the scientists are currently referring to as poofy planets. In essence, planets like Kepler-7b right here, that seem to be just a little bit too large and extremely low in density, yet whose existence and whose mass seems to be comparable to Jupiter. And although in the past the scientists explained this as basically being a little bit too close to the star, which potentially causes these planets to expand too much, it would not explain why this doesn't happen to all of the planets. Why only very few of them? What makes these particular planets so special to turn them into these very unusual poofy giants? Super super low in density, very massive, but also exhibiting a few other unusual properties we've discussed in videos that should be in the description. So in some sense these anomalies could once again point at something that involves dark matter. With the last example provided by the scientists being planets that were visible using radial velocity, or essentially planets affecting the star gravitationally, but planets that do not seem to actually produce any transits, or in other words, planets that seem to be invisible. And so in this case it would be planets made out of some exotic dark matter that's basically transparent but might actually produce a little bit of a gravitational lensing effect due to the gravitational interaction with the light that passes through it. And so it might resemble some kind of a tiny Einstein lens. Although so far nothing like this has been detected from any of the 10,000 exoplanets discovered so far. And so the main point of the study is to basically provide a kind of a groundwork for much more complex theoretical analysis of potential existence of these dark matter planets. Which they essentially start by taking a look at these two confirmed exoplanets from distant star systems, Corit 1b and K244b. In this case, the scientists wanted to figure out if there's any possibility that any one of these two planets could potentially be a dark matter planet, a GEP. And so they try to compare their predictions with the observations in order to see if the light curves detected from these two exoplanets would somehow be unusual enough to be possibly dark matter. And in this case, the planet on the right, K244b, the Neptune-like planet orbiting a Sun-like star, approximately six and a half masses of Earth, discovered back in 2016, according to the scientists in this paper, currently cannot be ruled out, meaning that there's maybe a small chance that it's not an actual physical planet, but instead is made out of something a little bit more exotic. And especially because of the much smaller radius of this planet compared to what's predicted for the planet of this mass. But obviously at the moment this is still very circumstantial evidence and doesn't really tell us exactly what this planet is made from. We would have to have observations from the James Webb in order to actually see what's in the atmosphere of the planet to then see if it's actually made out of baryonic matter, which it probably is, or if it's made out of something more exotic. Nevertheless, the proposition is still kind of intriguing. Especially because several planets have been discovered so far that do not have a very good explanation in terms of their mass, density or size. And so whether these unusual planets are made from some unusual Fermi balls, non-topological solitons, cube balls, dark quark nuggets, dark nuclei, or some other explanation for the potential particle that could explain dark matter, I guess only time will tell. Because at the moment this is still very hypothetical and very theoretical. But the idea itself is still kind of intriguing. And so once the scientists figure out exactly what's happening with these more exotic planets and are actually able to explain them a little bit more, or once we have more updates about dark matter, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.